Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Let's Buy Boots. And I've got some really special guests with me today. I've got Matt and Jim from Aldwine. And thank you guys so much for coming to hang out. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your store that you got in North Carolina? Well, thanks for having us, Phil. Um, well, we opened two years ago, April of 19, so a little little over two years ago. Our specialty is, is Alden. We also you know, carry some some other great products as well as, as your products, Ashland. Well, you know, Matt and I are both big Alden enthusiasts. So, you know, makeups was like the big thing for us to get into writing our own designs. So that that's been a big focal point for us. And you know, we've got probably 50 makeups in store right now and probably another 50 or so in the pipeline. So well, rumor has it that. I've been speaking to a lot of people now in the boot world and footwear world, I, I suppose, in particular, the Alden footwear world, which has been the focus of this series so far, uh, been trying to shop for some Aldens. And it's come up a few times that you guys do some of the best makeups in the game. Run me through essentially how you guys come up with some of these special makeups and what's what, what do you think makes it stand out as a little different uh, Aldwine versus some other uh, Alden distributors. My side of it is, is, you know, Jim and I have had a lot of time, spent a lot of time together the last year. <laughs> you know, it's been kind of just us two in the store for, for you know, obviously through the pandemic and everything. So it was a lot of it was spitball, you know, and both being Alden lovers. And so me coming from just purchasing a bunch of Aldens and Aldens that I like and, and Jim, same, same thing. So just putting ideas together and just kind of bounce them off each other has been a big part of it. And another thing is collaborative too, you know, just people, you know, throwing ideas at us has been, has been a really big part of it too, as well. And it's done very well for us. You know, if it, if it's an idea, it works, you know, and get some people together, we run with it and it, it's, you know, it's proven favorably for us thus far. Something that I've noticed that I'm just incredibly impressed with is the community that you guys have cultivated. Perhaps this community was sort of already there with Alden, but it seems like you've created some some areas for people to sort of get together in, including uh the groups that i've come across from you guys on on facebook which i've been really enjoying i think it's called alden alden enthusiasts you guys run that group yeah there's a yeah i'm one of the administrators of that group and that that's a group that really has 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 been the backbone and, and allowed us to do what what we've been doing for the last you know two years uh, especially the last year you know we joined the group probably about six months before the shop opened you know i think at that point there was maybe two or three hundred people in the group and it's now like over 7100 people you know it's just like Crazy. growing up into this whole thing um you know matt and i were both style forum guys that's where we met we met on style forum but and and we still love style forum but i think you know we spend quite a bit of time in in the facebook communities now and it's a lot of fun there's a lot of a lot of great people that are you know not only customers but they're great friends at this point so yeah and that that's is that how the collabs are coming through it's sort of getting a, a sense of the pulse of the community of what people are into and and just making what people want it's just as easy as that yeah, I mean, it's 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 somebody will say, hey, you know, I, I would love to have a white suede long wing blue trim. I'm thinking, well, that's not one that I had on my radar, but let's see what people, you know, if people are interested. We put it out there as a suggestion and bam, we got like 15 orders for a white suede long wing. So so sometimes it's it's just that simple where, you know, we have good ideas, but sometimes we don't think of everything. And, and it's just nice to get some feedback from people that you know, might give you something that wasn't on your radar, but turns out to be a, a home run. Yeah. And communication is fast. You know, I mean, yeah. it's instant, you know, we put it out there and people are, I mean, it just seems like they're just following us and just anything you put on there. It's just, there's a quick response to it, which is, you know, helps a whole lot. And, you know, response time and, and Jim's really good at responding too. you know, off hours, on hours, it, it doesn't matter. Somebody sends something in and he's on it, you know? And so, <clears throat> and it's, you know, Facebook has been fun and, and it, I mean, if you kind of follow us on it, we're kind of the jokesters of, of the Alden world, you know, and just post goofy stuff, you know, just to lighten it up instead of just, you know, trying to hock a pair of boots or something like that. You know, it's kind of the day in life of Aldwine and what we do. And, you know, and it's 
And it's what we are, you know. I mean, we sit around the shop and just joke with each other most of the day. Right. Anyway, so, I think know. I've seen some of the some of your leg shots, <laughs> if, if that's what you're referencing. <laughs> yeah. It's a good good yeah. leg day. <laughs> leg day. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be. I, you know, I'll try to take some goofy picture. I'll lay on the floor. Or something. Of course, Jim will take a picture of it and then post it up. I'm like, come on, <laughs> you know. But it's fun. yeah. <laughs> nobody wants to just be sold to all day. And also, you know, I'm I joined that group. I you guys didn't mention it to me. I I just joined it because. In fact, I joined it because I started doing this Alden buying process again. And I'll tell you a little bit about my stories. I, I worked at the Horry and Leather Tannery, which I'm a couple blocks away from right now. And it's quite easy to fall in love with the leather when you're around it all the time. And just seeing the sheets of leather sort of wasn't enough for me to experience the material in a complete way. So I started picking up boots and shoes, uh, particularly from Alden, because Skip Horween and, and they were a customer of ours. Skip had always recommended them and he helped me with sizing. And it's just one of those things where you start to wear it and you just love how it, it wears in it. It feels better just about every time you wear it. And then it tends to develop and look better. And then that, that passion that I got uh, started, the passion I have for leather started with Alden footwear. And what happened for me, I think happens to a lot of people. And, and we see this sort of Le like nice leather boots and shoe uh, thing. When I was working at the tannery, we would see it go in a little bit of uh, a cycle. It was quite cyclical. And it, it's for this reason, I believe. So I got really into it about 15 years and bought 10 pairs of stuff. And I could barely wear them. All. I mean, you get into it and you start loving the stuff, but you just don't have enough feet to wear, uh, <laughs> you know, 10 pairs at once. So those 10 pairs, I, I, I still, if you look at my collection, it just, old stuff so i'm kind of out of touch i started to get back in touch again with the series here and that's how we came across you guys looking for all this quite easy like very organic how i came across you guys on facebook and people are posting great photos of shoes in there that which is also helping me to scratch that the leather itch a bit like i just want to see all the different makeups all the different shapes just beautiful photography even amateur photography people are so uh good at that these days no question uh, so that's th that's where i'm at right now and i still haven't bought a pair of aldens in many years and i'm still on the hunt and i want to get maybe just if you guys know of something that exists help me with this here originally i was there's two questions here it, originally i was looking for sort of an all blacked out boot and that could be shell core of any leather uh hopefully horween i'm kind of biased towards the horween stuff uh i think skip would have give me a hard time if i bought something that wasn't his uh, but i'm kind of looking for an all blacked out boot because i noticed when i was making some wallets there was just something magical about this sort of stealthy look where like the edge dressing was all black and the the liners black everything's black and then i started to notice as i kept looking into these it's almost like on footwear it might be a specific thing here where all blacked out looks kind of lame like it kind of looks grandpa-ish to me or something like a little bit too uh geriatric maybe i don't know if that's the right word but i was talking to brett klein from alden he said you might need a little bit of extra detailing like medallion or some perfs or something maybe you guys can guide me in this. I still, I have no black, um, nice shoes. I, I have like a weird quaddy moccasin that's all blacked out, but do you guys have any guidance for me on something like this? Well, black, black shoes are great. They're classic boots. You know, I, I would say the way the trends are now is to probably have some contrast, whether that is either the welt or adding like in shell cordovan you can't do a contrasting welt based on the finishing of the shell it has to be a black welt so we we've done brass eyelets on black shell to give it a little bit of a pop on non on non shell whether it's chamois you know reverse earth which is essentially black or you know some of the grains you can put an antique edge on there and i think that makes them a little more versatile and a little more visually appealing um you know for the customer who's who's maybe looking for something that that they can wear you know with jeans or, or otherwise i think sometimes if it's if it's black especially if it's shell and shiny it looks very dressy and that can be a little bit harder to dress down 
Mm-hmm. So I love black shell and black shell, <clears throat> black shell is underrated. I mean, it really is, you know, because if you've got a black shell and a shell in a, in a color eight next side by side, people are going to go for the color eight nine times out of 10 yeah. without question. But black shell, I mean, when you get, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, it's just it's shiny. It's, it's, you know, That's I love amazing. black shell. It's not, it's not, we've, we, I mean, we have a couple, we have uh, a couple of them that we've done and they've done well, but they're not immediate kind of sellers or just they take a little bit longer in the black shell but there's right I, if if i was going to do anything and, and and we could show you some stuff too and some ideas um, that we have as well in the black shell i, I you know i think you'd be impressed so mm-hmm. we've got a couple of them we've got a couple working we've got a black well the uh we got two in black. stock and then we have uh one in the pipeline right now yeah. so yep. yeah um, there's <clears throat> there's something do you feel like a a black plain toe I'll back up a second here because I was mentioning again to Brett Klein about these very light colored natural shell plain toe boots that I had. And I yep. me- I mentioned to him that I, I felt strange wearing them. It's almost like they were too loud, uh, like maybe too, too forward for, of a style for me. And he said something interesting that maybe he was agreeing. It's, it's like you need to put a perf or a medallion or something on the natural do you get the same sense with black or do you like black plain toes? I like a black plain toe. I, I think I agree with Brett on, on the lighter colors, whether it's shell or, or calf or otherwise. I think if you're doing a tan, uh, you know, it's really nice to, to have some detail on there. It, it adds some depth to it. For some reason, if you have a plain whiskey or, or natural shell, sometimes it looks a little bit I don't, lacking like it's missing something so having some perfing on there goes a long way i think matt's going to grab a couple pairs to oh great to, great great to show you that's where he went i have a theory also on the black of we sell a good amount of black wallets but like you said it's i i think that people that are really in to alden or really into the material and the leather are wanting a, a unicorn they want a unique treasure and they feel like they can get black from sort of anywhere you're right yeah. uh, matt you're right about black shell and completely under reddit yeah i mean even on a low quality webcam that's incredible yeah i love it. <laughs> i i had the brass added to it but i just think it's uh you know i mean it's your killer boots <laughs> it looks so good and you can wear it with denim you know i mean you know, i wear blue and black it doesn't you know i mean i was that wasn't your first pair of alden uh all, all, one yeah. of the one of the first yeah i don't know this is 2014 you know still shiny uh, Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. seen I've seen footwear from the 60s and maybe even earlier uh that shell that's still bright and shiny. You you don't need much to to keep it uh with a bright shiny luster. Can can I back up on something that you said Jim? You mentioned on the black shell that Alden won't make it with a a brown or sort of a natural welt. Is that, what is that about? Do you know? I think it's just a a, a transfer concern on the finishing coat on black shell bleeding into the welt. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Hmm. I think it, it creates kind of a log jam. They won't put brass on color eight for the same reason. So then they have to send them back through and they have to clean up the brass, you know, or the welt. And it just, I think creates a high uh, factory, you know, defect rate. So they just don't, they just don't offer it. So they won't do brass eyelets on color eight shell. They'll do it on any color, but color eight. That's a since real shame. Since 15. Yes, since it's 15. been a good five or six years. Yeah. Really interesting. We, we've we done a, uh, that's kind of sad because we've but done. Everybody uh, does conversions. So you'll see a lot of, and I have a lot of, of color eight with brass. So I've had them converted. Yeah. Mm. I've had them done for me. It's, oh, it's, I think it's a great combo. We, we have a wallet that has a piece of hardware on it. It's a money clip that it kind of looks gold, but it's brass. Yeah. And that color eight and brass is like a ultimate combo for me. I think it's Agreed. perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Where That's do you guys cool. land on um, the other thing I kind of get caught up with? And today, maybe we can share what, what we're wearing. Are you guys wearing any Aldens today? I am. I'm wearing uh, a pair of full strap loafers, Shell Cordovan. Oh, <laughs> That's one of ours. Yeah. I've seen that uh, one. Our Lucas. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's different. I mean, you just don't see it much with the combination of the Navy snuff, snuff suede. Snuff suede. Yeah. So. That's Navy snuff suede, huh? Yeah. That's great. That's beautiful. I'm wearing. Um, these are the uh i guess i'll take my shoes off <laughs> i'm wearing uh i'm wearing the uh i think they're called the all-weather walkers 
Yeah. They're, they're like a plain toe shoe. So they're nice. It's, you know, brown chrome yeah. XL oh, yeah. uh, plain toe shoe. I, I've always been sort of a plain toe guy. And it was supposed to rain really hard today. So I thought it'd be a great time to put on the all weather walkers. These have that sort of uh, like, I don't know what you call this, like a lug sole. Mini lug. Mini lug. Yeah. Mini lug. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little bit of a crossover shoe, right? It's kind of like pseudo dressy, but then the sole like really changes things up. Maybe you guys want to run me through some sole options. Maybe your opinions on different soles, perhaps starting with what's your favorite sole. I'm a leather sole guy. I think Matt is too. Um, I, I like single leather. I, I really like double leather soles. I find them to be the most supportive. Um, you know, they breathe a lot better than, than rubber. Um, that's just what I like. I like the double, double oak or double water lock soles. The commando sole is extremely popular, you know, in, in the Alden world. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like commando. So I was, when I first got into Alden, and if you followed anything that I've, you know, I, I went nuts the first year and a half buying all them. I mean, 65 pairs, I think, in the first year Ooh. when I found them. So, yeah. Got me beat by a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, my thing was Commando. For whatever reason, I wanted everything Commando, Commando, Commando. And then finally, I, I bought um older pair of Lafoe naval boots. And they were double leather. And I loved it. And ever since then, I mean, I'll wear either, but double. I'm a double leather convert. You know, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's comfortable. You can go all day long on it. People think it wears out too quick or it's not comfortable is, is, is totally false. I mean, yeah, it's they, just, it's, they wear like tanks, yeah. honestly. Yeah. 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 I was wearing a pair of uh, plantation crepe soles yesterday that it's, I don't think they make them anymore, but uh, there was a, another retail store up here in Madison, Wisconsin that was selling a, a boot. They were calling the Roy boot. It's kind of like the shoes. I'm, yeah, yeah. Context, context was selling something like yeah. I'm wearing now, but in boot form <laughs> with a crepe sole. Yeah. Pl the plain toe brown chrome Excel. And I was wearing those yesterday, uh, sort of walking around the city here. And I noticed a couple things. When I put them on in the morning, like, man, like I can't believe how comfortable these are. And then walking around, it's definitely like you're walking around on like squishy little pillows or something, but it's kind of not, not the best. I don't know. Yeah. Walking a bit and it's not great, but kind of lounging seemed great for the, the crepe soles. And perhaps it's the opposite for like a more dense leather sole or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I had, yeah. I had one pair. Yeah. I had a pair of crepe soles. I didn't have any issues with them really. I, I appearance wise. So, I mean, to be honest with me, it was just never a, a, a good looking sold to me we have we actually have a boot with um with a repel uh, suede with the crepe that that looks good it's kind of a black and white combination i had them converted to double leather you know i mean just soon not because i kind of i want to see they just yeah. aesthetically like matt said they're not my favorite either but you know they are very comfortable i got a kick out of your your story with with brett when you said that that uh skip had a pair like disintegrate in the slaughterhouse. He was wearing a pair of crepe soles. That was that was first. I never heard of anything like that. Isn't one that interesting, right? I, yeah. I, if I remember the story correctly, I think it was actually uh, Skip's son Nick was okay, Nick. telling yeah. me about that. He might have stepped in like a like a like a gasoline or something like that. Yeah. It, I don't know it, but he did explain <laughs> that it sort of melted the sole. I've seen wow. some people have. Um, I've seen some people have that that sole sort of separate a bit, which does not look pleasant. Mine hasn't done that, but mine are, I don't know if they've changed the way that they're doing it. Um, I've worn the crap out of mine that I haven't had any issues with them. I'm starting to realize though, for, if you're walking around a bit, it seems to make sense that you want something a little firmer. I've made that analogy to a, a bicycle saddle before, and that seems to make a lot of sense where you want like a, a little bit more of a firmer sole. And then something I hadn't thought about was that breathability. Um, and yeah. it sounds like you guys are echoing that too. And what do you think it is about the commando that makes it so popular? Is it that sort of sleekness to it and, and sort of like a hybrid between like the traction of a, of a mini lug sole and yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The lugs are sort of recessed off the edge of the sole. So, you know, from a side profile, they still look, you know, relatively clean and you can dress them up or down and, you know, I'm, I'm from, from Boston. So, you know, living in a climate like Chicago or, or the Northeast, where you get some inclement weather, you know, you want to have some traction on, traction on there. The commando, you know, makes for a nice sole option for yeah, sure. Good looking sole. Yeah, I mean, commando is a really good looking sole. I mean, 
you know, I mean, the comfort's there. And I, I mean, speaking of comfort, it's one thing. I, Alden, to me, you get the right size. They're comfortable right out of the gate. And that's the way it's been for me. You know, I mean, there's usually people with some kind of odd foot and everything else. But, man, you can just put them on and you can go. It's not like you need to break in right. and all them is what I've found. And, um, I mean, that's just the comfort no matter what the sole is. You know, mm-hmm. so, we, you know, we've tried. We've, we're doing a new sole that we haven't done. The um, the rubber sole that's coming. Day, day night? No. No, they don't do day night. Remind me. This, the, <laughs> our first sole that we're doing, the, the rubber, um, I'm trying to think, the brown boot. The, oh, is yes, it up on yes, your yes, site? Yeah. We're, yeah, we're doing a wedge sole. A wedge sole. We're doing a wedge sole. Wow. Wedge yes. right I've never worn a wedge yeah. A, I've never worn a wedge sole. I've never seen one in person in Alden. So we finally decided to do one. We're kind of excited yeah. about that. Yeah. I kind of like a wedge sole. They're very, I think the, the deal with them is perhaps not the most stylish, mm-hmm. but they're very lightweight. Uh, right, I kind of like the one I've worn. Does Alden do that as a stock option or a standard offering, or is that something that you got to twist their arm you, for? You have to do for as a makeup. To make. Gotcha. They, they have, I think, both. Are, I think they have three colors. I think they have a black wedge, they have a red wedge, and the cream, which is what we're running. We're running a cream wedge mm. with this really nice um, tar calf leather, really rich, dark brown. Oh, that'd be Beautiful. good. It's going to be a nice boot. Yeah. Is that up on the site right now? Yeah, uh, there's no photo. There's a picture of the swatch. Oh, okay, but it's 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 got the quad stitch cap and uh, heel counter, so it it, it kind of harkens to like the Iron Ranger look. And we, we we did the nickel, silver nickel eyelets and hooks, so it's it's going to be a really beautiful boot, I think. So you guys, is this a true statement? You started Aldwine to sell Alden, or was it? more than that as an initial thought alden alden so what is it about alden that make that made you want to do that why not any other footwear brand is other than just exclusively alden well for me i like them i mean that was so i i've gone down a rabbit hole of a lot from carmina edward green but i always came back to alden so i mean this is really i mean it's just I mean, you sell what you like, obviously, and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I have a passion for them, but I still have a passion for them. You know, I mean, I got a closet full of them. Just, you know, it's just it's fun to go in every day and just pick a different shoe. So, I mean, that's that's what it was for me. I think if you like that heritage, classic American aesthetic, and there's there's a lot of great bootmakers out there, but I think Alden is is really the the pinnacle of of American shoemaking and bootmaking. So. Um, there was no question. There was no question. <laughs> that was we we really contemplated just doing shoes, but you know decided that within Raleigh that there was probably some opportunity to you know sell some other things, and we have some some other nice brands that we carry, you know, including Ashland, which we love. Well, thank um, you. But yeah, I mean Alden. If you look at our store, it's like it's Alden, and then sort of everything else. I see. Yeah. yeah. So it's sort of choosing to sell Alden uh, as a, a first thought it was because the concept of we like them and their heritage American vibe. I've noticed that every pair of Alden that I've worn tends to be about the most comfortable pair of footwear that I have. Yeah. Now, I have some suspicions for why that is, but do you tend to agree with that? And And if so, why do you think they're so comfortable? Well, I mean, Alden Alden has a very rich history, you know, of 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 orthopedic shoe manufacturing. You know, I think it was post World War II. The bulk of what they were doing at the time was was orthopedic shoes. So they have this this long term understanding of of all the idiosyncrasies of of the human foot and how to create lasts you know, that work for, you know, full range of, of people. So fit is in any, in any quality shoe fit, fit is the most important thing. And I think Alden kind of covers so many bases with all of the lasts that they have. And, um, you know, obviously when you're using a steel shank, uh, you know, that, that creates further support and comfort over, over the long haul, Alden still uses a shank. Um, 
you know, they use all, all of the, all the components that go into making a quality shoe. There's a lot of things that you see, and there's a lot of things within the shoe that you don't see that are important. And Alden uses, you know, all of those things to, to really produce, I think, uh, a top quality shoe at, at a very fair price. I mean, they're not inexpensive, but, but, you know, compared to some other lines, you know, Alden's a, a tremendous value. I have one pair of tennis shoes and I've had them forever. They never get worn. I mean, it's just, they, they don't. I have an old pair of Aldens that I've suede Aldens that I mow the grass in. I mean, my LHS suede loafers are my go-to shoe. They're just, you know, easy to throw on, go and stuff. They're just, it's just comfortable in the sports there and stuff. And, and that, you know, and I think this is kind of, it, a lot of us, it's kind of become a tennis shoe society and stuff. And, and I, and we had a conversation with somebody about this and I think it's ruined a lot of people's feet. You know, they're just wearing these running shoes to walk in and they're getting collapsed, collapsing arches and, it's true. and, and it, you know, and stuff. And they just haven't really worn proper footwear. And then some of them, you know, I mean, they wear arch supports inside their shoes and in their tennis shoes and they've come in and they put on Aldens and some of them, not everybody, but we've had a few people that have converted that didn't even have to wear them anymore in the, in the Aldens and stuff, just for the, you know, I guess just the way it's built in the, orthopedic side of the, of the boot itself so or shoe so. that's a really interesting are you, you are, i guess i'm not as experienced with feet as you are but are you are you explaining that wearing a certain pair of footwear will change the shape of your foot well i, I think it can correct some of the issues you know just by wearing a shoe that that has more support i'm i'm I wouldn't say either of us are you know, yeah, not a podiatrist or, or, or have that yeah. the <laughs> across the top. Yeah, yeah. All blind is, you know, we're, not, we're not making any claims. Yeah. But no, but if you know, when you wear when you wear a, 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 a well constructed shoe like an Alden, especially one like I said with a double leather sole, a steel shank, I mean you're getting exponentially more support than you know any kind of sneaker or or lower tiered, lower quality you know, dress you on the market. That's for sure. So, you know, we've had guys that, that needed inserts that have been able to kind of phase out of them and correct the issues just by wearing a better shoe. So very interesting. I, I also think it's interesting. I think you're on the money with, uh, we've become a little bit more of like a sneaker society. I mean, I think they're, I, I actually like them. I don't, the only shoes that I wear that aren't like Corwin leather stuff or running shoes. Uh, it might be weird for me to like run in a, pair of boots or well, something of yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. but i do feel as i feel what you're saying is people are sort of shifting more towards uh sneakers as sort of daily footwear do you get a sense that you're getting a lot of new entrants into this like whatever we're going to call quality footwear world let's more specifically say the alden world that you guys sell are you getting people that have never experienced that before or is it you know 80 percent repeat alden customers because i'm very interested in trying to uh get the message out you know you might want to try this other stuff out if you've been wearing sneakers you may have not been supported on your foot ever before yeah it's a growing base yeah, it is yeah. and, and i'm gonna say pre-pandemic <clears throat> we had a good in-store a lot of traffic and jim's really good at measuring people and 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 getting the right fit and and you know and so we have a, we had a lot of people that never wore a quality shoe or you know really even felt them tried them smelt them look at them or anything and and that purchased them and, and it purchased more sense you know so that's always a good thing when you you know i mean Alden's are an investment there's no question about it you know it's you know some look at the price and go Ooh, you know and stuff but but they get on their feet and they wear them and stuff and they enjoy them and you see the smile on their face and stuff and, it, and yeah. they feel good they feel better and everything so yeah i mean we've we've co converted a lot of people and there's no them. going back yeah yeah that's the thing there's no going back yeah. so lifelong customers so that's you know yeah the <clears throat> the bit and you know returning is big of course you know and 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 that's the thing alden for me was another you know rabbit hole and stuff because there's always one makeup coming up after the next one it looks better you know you think so you got to have the next one next well, this, this guy is kind of case in point you know <laughs> three years ago he got his first alden and then he you know opened a store <laughs> yeah. you know standard he, he, trajectory <laughs> 15 right. months later so right yeah right. yeah i mean there's there's, there's still a strong, you know, enthusiasm for the brand, you know, longtime customers, but there's also lots of new people coming, you know, coming along as well, looking for, you know, better, better product at uh, heritage brands. So, you know, it's still, still a big deal. You know, we're still getting a lot of new people.
as a, as a fellow business owner, I, I imagine you asked yourself this, this question, which I ask myself all the time is how are people coming across me? You know, how are people coming to find out about shell court wallets and, and Alden and Aldwine? Um, do you guys have any sense of how those new entrants to Alden are, are coming across your store or, or Alden in general? Is there a place that these people are, are finding this that you're aware of? Uh, it, well, I mean, I'll kind of how I did it. So, and I've kind of, you know, explained this, that I really was never really into footwear. You know, I mean, if I, I go to DSW, it looked halfway decent, it was a hundred bucks, you know, it was on my feet and stuff. So uh, it, I was in a car business for a long time and pound the pavement and stuff. So, and it, never really that comfortable. But my wife bought me a pair of shoes, nice pair, they were Allen Edmonds. And, and they looked good. They felt good and everything that kind of started it. And, you know, if there's something nice that you, that you like and stuff, you start doing a little investigative work on it and stuff. So I started searching Allen Edmonds and then I eventually found style form. So style form had a form for Allen Edmonds. So, you know, here we go. <laughs> and so, you know, you kind of get involved in that and then you start doing a little bit more searching and then I found Alden. So it was kind of the jump from that. So for me, it was just kind of research. And, and, and I think that's worth a lot of people that it is, you know, that, that maybe get their first pair or just looking for a quality shoe or, you know, they get it and they just start start doing research on it and kind of find it. I used to work for Allen Edmonds and, and great, you know, great, great American shoe company. And I, I feel like your story is, is pretty similar. I think a lot of people sort of step into a better shoe with Allen Edmonds. It's kind of that gateway purchase it's you know the guy that was spending 200 or so on a pair of shoes might you know reach to 400 and like oh okay you know i finally crossed that that pain point and these are really nice so i'm gonna you know get another pair and another pair and then all of a sudden once you get accustomed to spending you know three or four hundred you might want to try a shell cordovan and then all of a sudden you know you're researching alden and and you're you know, living alden. on the street <laughs> Right, right, right. You right. spend all your money on boots. Then, right. then, yeah. You know, another thing, I mean, our store, I mean, we have a, a big shoe table that's that's pretty prominently displayed to the window. So people just walk in by the store, you know, obviously look in and see all these shoes. And that brings a lot of people in too. So, you know, it's pretty impressive that, you know, you, you, you got to go a long ways from Raleigh to find as many Aldens as we have in a collection. And that's why a lot of people travel to us too, as well. We have people from Washington, D.C., St. Louis, Florida, St. Louis, they drive to be fitted and to purchase all this, you know, just, just you know, I mean, just the, the service is a big thing, too, as well. You know, so it's yeah, it really is amazing the enthusiasm that's out there for Alden and, and people, the distance people will go. You know, it's it's pretty amazing. The people we've met just in two years and you, you sort of write off almost a year of it because it was during the pandemic. But yeah. We've met so many people, you know, that have traveled to our store specifically, you know, just to be fed. So. And your wallets, you know, they tie into it too as well with the shell cord of them and the leathers yeah. because, you know, somebody will put, I have mine. So, you know, somebody will, will take a picture of their boot with the with a wallet, you know, and just kind of tag you in and stuff. And that's how I found out about Ashland, you know, a while ago and stuff. So that's my natural Look how it's, I mean, this thing is aged. <laughs> oh, that looks like, uh, maybe it's the camera here, but it almost looks like cigar or something. Yeah. It's quite yeah. Dark. It's dark. It's dark. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Yep. That's a uh, natural shell. It's about two and a half years of, <laughs> of wear right there. It really is incredible how much the leather changes over time. And that, to me, that was sort of my draw to it. Um, working at the tannery, like I said, I would see those sheets of leather and I would cut off just like little squares and sort of put in my pocket. And I was just fascinated with how the stuff changed. It was pretty unique. And I liked, I think I liked the color change, but also that sort of luster, like increase of, of depth of luster. There's like a luster on the surface that you can kind of shine with a, a neutral shoe color uh, polish or like any sort of waxy neutral polish. You can kind of get that bright, shiny surface. But there's something a little bit magical about the shell cordovan as well as other veg tan leathers that almost have this like luster from inside. And I, I think I've got this concept from a person that was really into pearls, I think. And they, they were explaining that pearls have like multiple layers of luster. And I, it clicked up to me that that's kind of what the cordovan does is it has this like layered yeah. luster effect. It's incredibly beautiful. And But to your point about people coming across uh from sort of nerding out about 
uh, maybe they picked up Allen Edmonds first is I feel like I repeat this line to my customers just about every day. I, I thank people for taking time to think about what they're buying and, and looking at it and appreciating because I think it was like yourself, Matt, where I would go to DSW or Target or something. Hey, I need some shoes. I'm going to a wedding. Like, what do you got? And they just pick up whatever they have. I think now with the internet and so much, so many great communities like your own on Facebook and style form, there's some good stuff in Reddit as well. And even stitch down has this discord server that I've been hopping into. There's so much knowledge out there that you can really get some great guidance for essentially mm -hmm. anything that you're looking for. So what I tell people every day is like, thank you so much for actually pay, taking the time to think about the thing that you're picking up and, and understanding it and appreciating it. And we've taken that type of customer along with us for 10 years now and have employed nine people here at Ashland. Uh, and I'm sure you guys got you're working for yourself. I don't know if you have any other jobs, but it's like, it's because people are actually taking the time to appreciate stuff. And I, I was asking the question of how people come into the Alden world, because I want to try to open it up even more. I don't know if this is sort of like a modern American thing with globalization and whatever, but it seems like we're going for like, what's the cheapest, fastest, give me the thing right now. And we sort of have commoditized most things and made it as cheap as possible. And I wonder if we're going through one of those waves again, where people are kind of interested of, you know, what's made in my neighborhood or you know, what's made in my country or state even. Uh, something that's going to last and be great. Like I want something better. Um, and with the internet, giving us all these resources, I think might be the sort of modern key to, to this whole thing. But, you know, if you got any ideas for how we can uh, expand the audience, that, that's, that's the philosophy for Ashland. That's all we're trying to do here is share leather with more people. And uh, that's why you see me do videos like this, just nerding out about the leather. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's just literally, you know, one one guy at a time, and just giving him a, a you know, gr great experience and a, and a great product, and and hope that you know he enjoys it to to the point that he comes back the next time he has needs, and you know, you might tell a friend or two, and and so on. You know, I think um, we try know, to stay out in front of people, yeah, just as we can, because everything we do is grassroots. You know, we're not spending the money on advertising; we spend yep zero dollars on advertising. We tried it early on. <clears throat> you know, a couple of, an, an article and a and some radio spots and stuff, and really didn't see the ROI on it. So, you know, it's just saying out, it's out there. It's on Instagram. It's on Facebook. It's on it's on you know whatever we can to just kind of get our get the word out there and staying in front of it and staying in front of people and just posting you know ourselves, our products, and, and everything else. And it's you know, but I, I don't you know that's it. advertising has always been a scary thing for me because it's not a, you know it's expensive you know and, and I'm sure you get emails every day hey we noticed that you're not on the top of Google you know I mean I don't know how many oh it's emails gross <laughs> 20 <laughs> emails a day of like let's expand your follower base right, yeah I right. get a lot of that it's right. a shame yeah. too and I, we had a similar experience although we use a um we use a platform we're only a web store but we have a platform called Shopify where they will integrate um google and, and facebook ads for you i've done those where i didn't really put a lot of effort it was sort of like click a button and we'll we'll put your name in we people's email those. box or something uh we we sold some stuff with that but it's it's like you said it's all organic and grassroots and it's word of mouth which is yeah. which is yeah. great there's something that i think is a potential barrier uh, we're talking about people traveling to North Carolina. I know people will travel to New York to get fit as well, or anywhere there's an Alden store, right? In Chicago, we sort of have a, a little bit of an Alden desert. I mean, there are some stores here, but they don't have um, much selection from what I've seen. They sort of have like the 403 and 405 indie boots and maybe that's it. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think about that? I mean, I was very curious to hear from Brett Klein from Alden. I was curious to hear that there were, it's sort of a coastal thing. A lot of New York, a lot of West Coast, San Francisco. What do you think it is about the middle of the country here uh, where we're just not getting into it? The flyover? You know, I don't know. You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know there's Alan, more than you think. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I know Alan Edmonds had three, you know, 
strongly producing stores, you know, in, in the city of Chicago and Oak Brook. And um, I, I'm not sure what it is. I, I, I think it, it's as far it, as stores, as far as stores go, but there's a ton of retailers, but like you said, and there's, there's a couple more in Raleigh. They have a four or three or four or five and a loafer. That's it. You know, there's, and, and the reason is because most of these stores they're are, clothiers. they're clothiers first. Their shoes second. So shoes are like a, a, a distant, you or, know. Yeah. You know, they're kind of a prop. They're there. They're not, you know, if you're not comfortable selling the shoes, you don't know how to fit them that well. You really got to be, it's, it's nice to have nice product in your store, but you have to have the knowledge and, you know, the comfort and the confidence to, to sell it right too. So, you know, and it's a big leap of a big faith. part of it. You know, I mean, it's a leap of faith for me to start a business selling shoes, you know, I mean, the, and, and never owned a business before anything. So somebody thinking about that, you know, so it's, but, and, and I don't, you know, it said Jim and I were both into shoes, you know, big time prior to, so that was a big part of it. So anybody else, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, it's scary to start a business, you know, B to think selling shoes and, you know, and just, and I, I, I mean, I recommend anybody trying it, you know, I mean, go, go for it. You know, if you're somewhere in the middle of where there's not, but it's, it's, you know, it's tough, it's scary, but it's, it's rewarding to me. To I've, Matt's had, point. I've had that selfish thought of, of opening a uh, Alden store in Chicago here, but that's, you know, I'm, there's got enough stuff going on, yeah. <laughs> but maybe you guys should open a store here so I can buy some Aldens locally. That's actually, t- so that's my, my big point of all this is, it's very, uh, I think the sizing thing is kind of challenging. It, do you feel comfortable sizing people over the phone or over an email or something? Or is that something that you, got, you yeah. have to be in person for? No, we can do it pretty well. It, it, you know, if, if somebody's well dialed in and some other brands and they know their sizes definitively, you know, then, then it becomes a pretty easy process. You know, on a few occasions for somebody that just had no idea, they weren't really sure or they were on the cusp. I would mail them out a Brannick device and we would do some, some FaceTime zoom type calls like this, where we would do a virtual fitting. And, uh, you know, from there we would try to work with what Alden has in inventory. It might not be the shoe the guy wants, but we might be able to get him a size to try on, you know, at that point. And then, cause a lot of times guys are looking to order our makeups, which are, you know, you got to get your size in. They can't be, you know, if you get the size wrong, you're kind of, you know, Stuck. SOL. <laughs> so, you know, we try to do these virtual fittings and try to get get some shoes on on guys' feet if we can, just to make sure that that uh, that they're ordering the right size. But, you know, long story short, you know, we can get you sized whether you're you're in Raleigh or, you know, on the other side of the world. Even you know, it does it doesn't sending a uh, sending a Brannick device seems awfully generous because uh, I. I think I looked those up. They're kind of expensive, uh, but that's well, we get, really we, awesome that you do that. We get them back. They're not. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. 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 We always get them back. So. Yeah. That's yeah. Good so to hear. We, have, we have a few of them. So yeah. mail them out. And it works well too. I yeah. mean, we just did it this past week and a guy bought three shoes. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's well worth it. And, you know, it's a small investment for good returns. So it's, uh, but yeah, Jim does a phenomenal do- job at size and at fitting and, and fitting is a big part. You know, I, I think some people get a little carried away on fitting, honestly, you can get on the internet and, you know, and just for, you know, it's not exactly like, you know, they're not bespoke, you know, by any means, but, you know, they should be comfortable, but you can get a little carried away and, you know, but it was, boots, you know, loafers are, loafers are tougher than boots, you know, boots, you can get away with a lot. Why is loafers, that? Loafers, uh, you know, high arches, uh, flat feet, well, you know, loafers, you don't have a lace to, to tighten the fit. So if they... If they end up a little bit too loose, you know, then you have to, then you have to start sticking, you know, pads in there and kind of rigging the shoe to make them work. So a loafer needs to fit pretty close pretty to snug. Pretty I snug. See. Yeah. So they don't do like a like a very accommodating last, like a True Balance or a Berry in, in a loafer. Well, the Van Last is is the m- most similar to Barry in a loafer. That's where the LHS is. You'll see the the online suede loafers, the classic 986 and 987 shell cordovan LHSs. Those are on the Van Last. Those have a similar toe shape to the Barry Last. Um, they're generally pretty accommodating, but 
you know, sometimes guys will have more narrow heel and a broader forefoot. Sometimes the heel is a little bit too roomy. Loafers can always be a little bit more of a challenge. Obviously with a boot, you know, you've got the boot shaft up, up the, up, up the back of the heel, you have the laces, you know, you, you can wear a thicker sock, but with a loafer that you might want to wear sockless, you know, it's got to fit pretty spot on. That makes, okay. That makes sense. Have, yeah. have you ever seen any variance in size up or what Alden will tell you is a size in the same last? So where I'm getting at here is I, I might be too deep on sizing like Matt was saying, but I, I'm wearing these all weather walkers. They're nine and a half ease. Yeah. I also have 10 and a half triple wides and a true balance. They both fit me. And I can't, I don't know if I just don't know how they're supposed to feel. Or <laughs> wait, 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 right. wait. What, what size? What was the first one? Nine and a half E. And what's the next one? 10 and a half triple E. <laughs> That's, uh, I think, I think the next branding we're sending out is, is <laughs> <laughs> well, what do they, they feel good though. I don't know. I, I kind of just don't look at this. I've noticed it today. Yeah. It's like, what size are these? Oh my God. They're nine. Let me double check this. I don't want to, <laughs> cause I realize I come at nine and a half E. Wow. And, and then those and are, I mean, I should double check. I'm pretty sure they're 10 and a half triple wides. One sec. You can make fun of me all you want, guys. <laughs> but uh, these are the ones that Art from Alden fit me on. Ten and a half E over E E E. I think a triple wow. Y. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. One of those. One of those is not. <laughs> so that's why I was correct. asking. Do they? Do they not? Have they? Have you ever had a pair that wasn't the actual size it said? Or oh no. So I just got something weird. Like, I just don't know how they're supposed to feel, I guess, because they both feel good to me. Like, this is quite a bit, the triple wide is quite a bit roomier. In, I would think so. In yeah. The forefoot. It feels good, though. Yeah. It's yeah. not, it's not like snug, or I suppose this nine and a half E is like holding me in a little bit more, but they're both comfortable. Yeah, and <laughs> so, it's, it's also, I mean, that lace is way up higher on the boot and stuff to right. keep it on a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if that was just a shoe in that same size, you'd probably be swimming in it. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I, because it really doesn't make any sense, but that's, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't at all. And that's why I get, that's, I have other sizes of all ins also. <laughs> so yeah. I still have, I don't think I figured out my actual size and that's well, why we'll, we'll in all these videos, that, I keep but... asking about sizing. All right. You're, yep. you're going to hook me up and then maybe I'll yep. share that. I, I want to share that story with people. Cause I wonder how many people don't know what they're doing like me <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing hey i didn't i wore you know for the longest time half my first my shoes were the wrong size they were half size too big so i'm 11 and a half true to size so i you know and that's what i wore everything so well i'd buy shoes that were 12 i mean i was never measured so everything prior to this i'd buy 12s i mean that was just whatever shoe it was it'd be a 12 12 12 so then i started ordering some aldens and i ordered 12s and it was one of the first pair and they're big. I mean, there's there's no question they're big. They're claws elastic boot. And then then I tried 11 and a half. I think I went to, you know, everybody says go down a half. So I went 11 and a half Barry. I was like, oh, okay, this works. But I'm actually 11 in Barry. You know, I'm 11 and a half true to size. My right foot pushed at 12, but I'm 11 Barry. So, I mean, I, I never really got the right fit for a long time, you know, just, just kind of bought and you guys, they were boots. So, you know, they were still comfortable. So it wasn't, you know, what hurt my feet or anything like that. Yeah. That's the thing is they're fine. I mean, I like them, <laughs> uh, both of these. Uh, so when you have the right fit, what does that, are you feeling the ball? Is that what your main thing that you're looking for is like my ball, the ball, my foot's going to like sink into a certain spot and it's just going to feel right. Well, yeah, it should feel really nice in the forefoot, but also right through, you know, the arch and, and the heel. Cause you want, you want to have, like, I think for the true balance last, it's got a really nice, the indie boot last, it's got a nice full toe box, but it really slims out nicely through the waist and the heel. So even though it's a wide boot up front, it's it's nice and secure your heel should you know be 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 right in the heel counter and you know not getting a whole lot of a lot of movement so it's really it's really the the whole thing you know you really sh it should feel like it fits well all 360 degrees of the shoe gotcha have you and ever you can nail, i think if you can nail one last you you pretty much can fit into the rest of them whether it's aberdeen whether it's plaza right. whether it's hampton 
uh, you know, and I knew when we got in uh, 379X, which you don't hear much about, which is a phenomenal ass to me. It has, you know, I think it was more marketed for Asians to begin with. It has a really, really tight heel and waist and a, and a larger four foot kind of like true balance. But man, I mean, it's so comfortable, but it's, you know, you can see, I mean, it just tapers in really tight at the heels and stuff but for me it's like a perfect fit for similar to the modified last yeah that yeah. was so 379x is a, i have never heard of that it, that's not the modified last but it's similar 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 shape yeah yeah have you ever done modified or worn a modified last no you know matt and i went to new york three summers ago um to meet alden for the first time and and talk to them about you know what we were looking to do and while we were there, we visited, you know, some of the, some of the shops, you know, we, we got, got over to see the guys at Madison and we went over to Lafoe and we went to uh, Molded as well. And I was hoping to try uh, to modify, but they, they didn't have my size in house. So I didn't get a chance to try it, unfortunately. I was so excited when I first saw the modified last from Molded Chew simply and I don't know if the aesthetic is like exactly what I love. It's a little strange, but it was very incredible. It was like seeing Alden again for the first time, which I liked. It was like, oh, here's a new, like, because it was as if seeing Alden as a different company. And I, I liked it for that reason. And that made me realize how big of a deal the, the lasts are. It's something I'd never really paid attention to for aesthetics as, as much as I did for fit. Um, do you feel like, and I noticed the Plaza last has, is pretty stylish. Do you guys have a favorite last, not, not in terms of, of fit and comfort, but do you have one that you like the look of more than another? Mm, mine was always Plaza. I mean, I always liked, I mean, I just thought that the chisel tone and everything. So coming from, yeah, I, I mean, that, that was mine, but I mean, I've grown. So I never wrote, I mean, the honest with you, I didn't like true balance at the beginning because, you know, I'd, I'd come from a Edward Green or something. It was just real chiseled and everything. And then just put on a big true balance be like, Ugh, you know, but, but I found, man, it's so comfortable and, and it's hard to beat, man. I mean, you have an indie boot with jeans and stuff and it's just a, it's just a killer look. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I like Grant too. I think Grant's a really good looking at cap toe Grant boot. And that's that black shell when it has a Grant last is, is an amazing looking last. I don't you yeah, know. Yeah. I like Barry and I like Hampton. You know, those would be my two favorite. Yeah, Barry wingtip. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you, for the looks, uh, you like those two? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think Barry last kind of hits that, you know, especially in the, in, in shoes, that's where the, the long wing blucher and the plain toe blucher, that's kind of the classic American, you know, shoe style. And, very last just i think looks beautiful on both of those and yeah flat well a flat well very last i mean yeah, it just yeah. looks amazing you know everybody says yeah. very well or barry is, is bulbous it's not <laughs> you know and especially you put a flat weld on it you know, I mean, people don't even know what yeah. it is it yeah it looks so good and clean like our our saddles we're doing now are are very with a flat welt on them and they just they look incredible yeah. and they're comfortable you know are you guys um I have your your website open here. Let's pull up the old the old internet here. Take a look at your website. So this is the store, huh? It's awesome looking. Thank you. And did you I've been, we've been uh it's interesting. We've been working with some uh double interesting here. Number one, we're working with some restaurants, which which is like a different market for us. But number two, the restaurants are coming back and uh we're we're working with them. Uh some people are building out new stores. So we're making menu covers and check presenters and stuff like that, which I love being able to, Very cool. to help them out. And uh, I didn't, you don't really think about these things, but somebody had to design that restaurant. Um, but also somebody had to design the store. So who's to blame for this awesome looking uh, layout here? I mean, Jim and I got together and stuff and just kind of threw out some, some ideas. So I hired an architect in uh, downtown Raleigh, actually. So keeping it local and we just kind of, through the ideas at them and they helped us put it all together. So we have, we have like 20 foot ceilings and, yeah. you know, we oh, don't wow. have a, all of our space is, is, you know, front of house. We don't have any, we don't have any storage. So, you know, in order to inventory all of the, the quantity of shoes that we needed, you really can only see a small portion of what we actually have. Mm -hmm. It goes up much, much higher than that. So we decided to use the height and create that that library ladder effect, you know, so that we could 
so that we could display all those green boxes. So this, the store was a shell originally. Yeah. Um, I had gravel floors, uh, no HVAC, nothing. Wow. <laughs> so it, it, you guys was, did a it lot was, of work. Yeah, for the interior was ground up. I mean, if you uh, if you guys are looking for an alternate store name, I'm going to suggest the Alden Library. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be so cool. Do you ever have like a sense of of where you want people to start? You'll see it right there on the front. You know, I've got those five bullet points right there: shop Alden shoes, browse our our makeups, shop Hagen. You know, those are kind of our main our main brands. Um, you know, and that's we just I have those little click throughs there to bring people right to, you know, the main, the main pages that we have. All right, cool. Talk me through these. So, you know, Matt and Matt and I both love saddle shoes and Matt, one of the first makeups he suggested was to do uh, the blue and the white saddle. So we've already done two runs of this that we call the Fayetteville. Fayetteville street is the main drag that runs through downtown Raleigh. So a lot of our earlier makeups were, were named after um, streets or, or prominent locations, you know, local to Raleigh. So the Fayetteville was born from that. Um, you know, so we just love that classic, you know, old school. And every kid had, I had a pair, Jim had, had a pair, pair growing, growing up. So, so, yeah. Uh, I see. So that's so, the berry last again with the flat welt on the front. And it's just, it looks very sleek, even though it's berry, which, you know, has a nice full tail. The 270 welt really sleeks them out through the, through the waist. And, you know, just, I think a, a very classic looking saddle. So this is one of the early makeups that you guys uh, it was did? One of, yeah, it was probably one of the first 10 or 12 that we submitted, yeah. you know, and from there we, we, we did, we did one with the ivory and the load in. And then we just got the 100% ivory in last week. So that's the third and uh, latest installment. Hmm. Is this, um, is this suede a little shaggier than most suede that you see? Yeah. Yeah. The ivory calf suede has a, has a much, a much more pronounced nap than some of the other, you know, stead suedes that we, that Alden uses. I don't know do. what it is about the white, but. Furry. You know, yeah, it's very furry. It looks, it looks, it looks you can a see lot. Our, you can see yeah. the good contrast right there. It's like much yeah. tighter of a nap on the on the brown. Uh, it almost Loden. looks like a reverse chamois, you know, um, just in terms of like that that heavier nap that you see. Different texture, different feel. From like a leather tanner perspective, it was always such a challenge for us to make a really tight nap. So from like a technical perspective, I I find that tight nap of the stud stuff to be miraculous but it's i'm amazing. also i'm kind of yeah. into the shagginess of the reverse chamois yeah I mean, where do you guys land on i mean you don't have to that's the other thing but that i always kind of talk about with leathers you don't have to pick one it's like right no there is no best it's just they're different things i mean do you tend to favor the shaggy over the tight it depends you know i think i think generally generally the the the, the cleaner nap the tighter nap you know looks really beautiful if you're going for something like that's a little more refined but you know if you want something more rugged um and hardy looking then then the reverse chamois i mean you can't really get a better rugged leather than that with alden in my opinion it's and do we have that on here uh uh, we do not yet so okay i we've got one in 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 the pipeline but but alden is is soon to release a version of the indie boot. So if you stop there, you'll see the 4011 HC, the snuff suede. Yeah. Basically that build that you see there is coming in the next month or two in reverse tobacco chamois. Ooh, nice. So it's good. It's going to be a beautiful boot. We've got a, we've got a bunch of those coming and that's just a, a no brainer boot. The, even this one here is just such a great look. Yeah, I know it's it's my buddy Skip will be mad for me not liking uh, a non Horween <laughs> leather, but uh, God, that looks great. And what is what is forty eleven HC? I don't know if I've seen that before. That's that's the model number. Um, okay, so it's all, different than different than Indie Boot. They're both they're both True Balance Indie Boots, and Alden doesn't really call them Indie Boots. That's okay. It's just a name that's kind of carried over, you know, through folklore and forums because of the movies but 
you know, the, the boot that you have is the 405. That's what Alden calls them, the 405 mock toe boot. Um, but, you know, we, we use, we call them Indies because that's what everybody calls them. So 4011 indicates this, this particular leather and combo. And yeah, 4011 is the, is the style number. The H designates hooks and the C designates commando. So when you see HC, oh. that means it has okay. hooks and commando. I love that. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, sorry, I, we got off, off track of your makeups here. So I, I like, I like the sort of linear story where you get, you started off with these fate fills or, yeah. or one of the earlier makeups. What, do you remember any other early stuff? Uh, the Sir Walter there to the left, that was one of our first. Uh, that's a boot that we really love. The Plaza Last. It's, it's the one boot that we have done with all eyelets. And if you look closely, they're all blind eyelets, meaning that there's oh, no, there's no, you know, there's no metal eyelets on them. So this boot, you know, on the Plaza Last, very sleek look. You know, it, 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 if you really want a boot that you can wear with a suit, I don't think you can do better than than the Sir Walter here. It's it's got the clean eyelets on a very chiseled last to two seventy welt again. Um, you can see the older pictures we took. The first ones had the flat laces in them, but we purchased round laces. So oh, yeah, we put some round laces. So here's so the they, flat. I think the round's a little better for this. Oh, yeah, it's a lot match. cleaner. Yeah, yeah it's a lot cleaner. But you know, you something I've always, I think I'm a little old now or something because I think wingtips are super badass with jeans. I would wear these with, with jeans even. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely. Do. He does all the time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a nice. Okay, so that's an early one. What else? That was what an early one. Early? It also has the the mahogany. Um, yeah, the dark edge, edge so the mahogany edge. So, so most color eight makeups you see nowadays have the antique, that redder, browner, you know, edge to them. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, you would always see a dark edge like this with color eight shell. You know, if you go back to the fifties, sixties, you know, up until really the last maybe ten years. All Alden Shell had that dark edge. Um, so mahogany is nearly black. Correct. Yeah, it's nearly black. It's a it's a very dark brown, almost black. Um, you know, that's kind of the classic way to make a, a color eight mm-hmm. model. Um, I like those a lot. Yeah, so we wanted something very very classic. The one right next to it, the Doctor G. This was a boot that Matt actually designed a, a different version of this boot with Alden Madison like three years ago, right? Yeah. That was a split toe. So we just made it, you know, a traditional mock toe, more like an indie boot look on the plaza last. We've done a couple of runs of this already. This is beautiful. So what you were, you came up with that with Alden Madison because you were a fan and said, can I please Correct. have this? Yep. <laughs> That's yeah. Great. That's yeah, great. Yeah. And that, you know, I just went out and collected a bunch of people that wanted it too and submitted the names to them. He bought two pairs to get the run made. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, yep. they're, these are great looking. I love yep. it. All right. So what, what else was after that? So this is, this is predates old wine. So, sort of. Yeah, sort of. So the next row down all the way to the left right. is the, the Dylan. The Dylan was at the very first color eight shell cord of boot that we ran at Aldwein. That was the first one. Again. These are great. And, yeah, beautiful, you know, medallion tip, cap toe uh, with the full quarter brogue. Flat 360 well. Yeah, very last again. So we've done two runs of this boot. Um, one of my my favorites. I have a pair of these. Is the uh, collar, the inside collar here, something that you guys spec out as well? No, uh, Alden kind of chooses that. It generally, it's a with with color rate. I think I think that's just like a burgundy calf. Mm-hmm. We choose the in, inside linings. You'll see, like it's a you know, like a cognac. You can almost see it behind the tongue there. Yeah, you can see it there. A, this is a great, just everything great about this view here. Yeah, I love those. God, might have to buy some more boots. <laughs> we know a good right. place. I know. Yeah, you. I know a guy. <laughs> uh early stuff here was the tanker kind of early uh that was a more recent one we do have a different tanker the oak city tanker that we got in you know probably probably a year into our it's down there it is there it is yeah yeah that's our very last tanker 
And how do you feel about, um, I feel like this bigger, I believe this is a Norwegian. Yeah. Split. Norwegian. How is that defined? Is, is it, is it a bigger split toe that's got more of this seam? Uh, well, it's, aesthetically? it's the, the Norwegian, it's, it's considered Norwegian like that. If it's hand sewn, which these are, you know, you can have a split toe that's, that's machine stitched. That is often referred to as an Algonquin toe, which we have another version of, of an Algonquin that's a non hand sewn split toe. But generally, the the NST or the the tankers would have that hand sewn apron and, and toe stitch, like you see mm -hmm. featured on on these boots here. So tanker is another name, like how Indy. So it's not, you know, you say tanker to all of them, and they're going to go, "What? They don't know what tanker is." So it's <laughs> the same. I mean, they'll know what an Indy boot is, but yeah. they, they don't use tanker. Or... Yeah, there's there's a lot of terms that you know come from the forums like this and. You know, I think I think the original tanker boot, from my understanding, was made on the 379X last, which is the military last. And somehow from there, it became known as the tanker boot. And that's what we all call it. So we decided to go. So we try to do a little different than most. So we went double leather on it versus everybody else doing commando. Yeah, and it's beautiful, too. Yeah, the um, leather just it just frames, you know, it, it just that clean frame on a double sole like that. A lot of people mention the framing of the leather. That's it's something that I hadn't really thought about uh, too much before. But yeah, like when you look from above, you see this, the welt sort of frame yeah. everything around. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I feel like um, I feel like split toes are kind of polarizing it. Are they a popular sort of makeup for you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I never liked I never liked split toes, but the very first pair of Aldens I got was a very similar boot to this. I got a tanker boot from... Alden Madison, maybe six years ago. And it's just beautiful that, that hand stitching. So there's, there's an Algonquin front right there. That's a split toe. That's not handsome. Right. Also known as the V tip. Also known as a V tip. Yep. Yeah. I see. I've, I kind of like this one a little bit more, but I, I don't know. I, I also keep in mind that for me, I'm just like a plain toe guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, just give me nothing. <laughs> Well, uh, sometimes that's the best way to showcase the leather. You know, it's it's just the focus is. is is fully on the leather. That's that a point. beautiful boot, the Morgan boot. Yeah, I mean, it Phenomenal. looks like it showcases. You know, Shell Cordovan. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, what is Oak City? Is that uh, near something where you guys are at? It's Raleigh. Is, Raleigh is 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 called the City of Oaks. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Let me so guess. If you go. That, a lot of oak uh, trees. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. a lot. If you if you go down, like one of our biggest sellers was the the Loden. It's up. Go oh, up. Go up a little bit. Where's the or down? I'll find it's you. A, it's guy. a Loden. Yeah. That one. There it is. Yeah, that thing. That's we're uh, starting our third run of those. Yeah, it's been our best selling yeah, makeup but ever. Sold out every time. It's a really good color. Yeah. That Loden suede is is really neat. Loden means yeah. It's it's. And, you know, just depend on how you look at it and the color light. So it turns from green to gray to taupe to brown. So it's got a bunch of different colors in it. So. Yeah, it's a real chameleon. Yeah. How do you, how'd you come up with this concept? Like, I want a green suede boot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was one that was born from the Facebook group. Yeah. And That's one like, of the guys oh, cool. said, hey, let's do a load and tanker. Yeah. Um, John Sh uh, Schmelk. And, you know, I, we, we, John's we, a customer we, of ours. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, and we put that up to the to the group and sold out the first run and you know, sold out the second run and now we're on our third. So that boots it's been it's been a great boot. I love that. It's really interesting for us, at least maybe it's a wallet world thing, but we notice we get, you know, a lot of browns and tans people want and some blacks. And then the next color down is sort of blues. When we get green leathers, we don't do as well. So it's really good to hear uh people are into green boots from you guys uh, but yeah. people really like a dark navy also or even a light blue it, it's funny blues blues great but but in actuality the green is much more versatile i think you know in terms of what you can pair it with versus the blue you know when the, we the were uh, super super versatile i think if you talk to savvy 
merchandisers, people setting up displays in stores, they'll always mention you got to have a green in the lineup. And it's there's something about green that makes everything around it look better. <laughs> so we've sometimes put green in uh, certain wallets just to like get a better photo. <laughs> but, you know, people, some people want green. It's just we don't do as well as that as opposed to something like this tan um, or whatever color uh, they call this one. We yeah, do a lot better with like orangey tans and color yeah. type stuff. For sure. Uh, tell me about this guy. The in so this, this was uh, you know, we have one of one of our buddies, Alan uh, Salvage Line is his is his social media handle. He's a big lover of the Grant Last, so he he was messaging me and said, "I want something in tan," you know, or, or I think he said something like a like a grain boot on on the grant last. So, you know, I kind of found some, some leathers and, you know, we talked about this one and he said, yeah, let's do that one. And it's a medallion tip boot, similar to the Dylan boot that we did in you know, our color eight boot, but, but this one being on the grant last, it's got the commando outsoles and the brass eyelets, which I think are beautiful up against the tan. Oh yeah. And how much is this really interesting that you guys are able to accommodate your customers like that? That's awesome that you can do that. Is it a big challenge? I mean, I'd imagine if, like, if you came to me at Ashland and said, I want this thing that you've never done before, I'm going to give you a long lead time. Uh, it might take yeah. a while and you got to order a certain amount. Is is that sort of the same story with Alden? Yeah. More or less. I mean, yeah, we have to work within the scope. You know, we we know what Alden can do and what, what we're able to get done. So, you know, we'll get a lot of requests that we can't fulfill just, patterns that don't exist or you know materials that, that aren't available or you know we get rare shell requests all the time but you know yeah and, and there is a certain number that we have to turn into Alden so yeah we've got to buy you know a run yeah in order to get something made and run I mean a run starts at 12 so yeah. you know so okay that, and the lead time is a long time so it could be anywhere from six months to a year I mean right you really can't say so people that want these have to go in knowing that, and most of them do for the most part. They've done the research somewhat, you know. It's not, it's not going to be here in two weeks. So, but they're everybody's cool with it, you know. So when you said, "Hey, I want an indie boot with a commando sole," they said it's going to be six months, like this guy here. Basically, anything in, in a berry, in a berry last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the point of this. So the Pisca is the the first run of a collection that we're that we're looking to develop is it, just a very last alternative to the 405s the 403s the 401s you know just whether it be fit preference or just aesthetic preference some guys like the look of berry better than true balance so you know we thought that offering that that category of a berry last indie boot um would be something that you know, a lot of guys would like, we're actually, we're actually doing one in reverse tobacco chamois. So we've got, we've got two others in the works and, and probably, you know, more to come after that as well. These are true, truly striking here. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the one with the... this is a very unique boot. That's the one on the plantation soles. Um, wow. that's a, it's, it's similar to the milkshake. This is, it's called the marble, uh, Rapello suede. It's uh, it's 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 got a little more yellow hues versus the milkshake, which has more grayer hues. Yeah, but it's lighter. but uh, I, very I unique. Could see, uh, I could see a lot of street wear folk getting really into this. Yeah, it's again that sole is like you know it's super comfortable. It's there's no softer sole I don't think at all. And and that's it. That, yeah, that's for, way that sole pairs well well yeah. with it. I think just the dark and the white contrast to it. I mean, it's just a cool looking boot. I've never yeah. seen this before. This is awesome. <laughs> that is really cool. And how did this come about? Uh, you know, so so actually, you know, there there's there's this was one that that was an orphaned uh makeup i don't know when it was made but but for whatever reason you know either the retailer that ordered them closed or they made it with the wrong spec or for whatever reason it was sitting on the shelves at alden you know mm -hmm. we were at a point earlier this year where we were a little bit light on product and 
uh, we ordered we ordered these in because we thought they were you know cool makeup and kind of a nice spring kind of colored. Man, this too though. <laughs> is it, so you're saying this this leather, the ivory is a little less yellow, and this is a little the, bit more. The gray. ivory is white. I, the milkshake is oh, is sorry. another milkshake is another lighter version. So if you go up, there. yep, there it is. That's a milkshake suede. It's a good neutral. It's more neutral gray tones. Yeah, yeah, a little more of a gray tone neutral. Beautiful you can boot. Immediately see how cool the Plaza Last is too. Yeah. I got to get me some Plaza Last. All right, let's do that. What do you got that's black in Plaza? <laughs> mm, keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. You got something? Is this? Right there. Yeah. There it is. It's nice. It's almost nice that's it, isn't it? It's all black. <laughs> yep. Okay. Huh. It's all blacked out. You know what makes it better too, I think, is the, the cap toe. Yep. I think this in a, a plane might be a little strange. Or yeah, on Plaza, on Plaza, I think a cap looks much better than a plane toe. I think on a plane toe, you want a more rounded last, in my opinion. Can I get these in shell? <laughs> Uh, it's not part of the stock assortment, but if I bought 12 of them, and wait, buy 12 months. of them, we'll make you 12 pairs. Nope. I'll yeah. give a pair to Matt back there. There you go. <laughs> we'll Those are cool too. See, that's where there's where you, you know, what you need to do is come up with the kind of ideas and, and spitball with us. And then we can do a collab of sorts. So, I mean, if only Alden, well, this will lead to a great additional topic, but if only Alden would let me give them black Dublin leather, that's like, the ultimate dream for me to me the the black dublin leather from horween if people who haven't seen it it's very different than this this type of calfskin yeah yep. the dublin's a veg tan leather and it's it, it's intended to be a very much a natural look so it has a, a very pronounced and intense green character and it doesn't have like this calfskin probably has a tighter break so this calfskin certainly a, a little bit more refined and like a dressy right. kind of vibe where the dublin's like you know, look at me. I'm like a t-shirt and jeans guy. So it's very much up my alley. I, to me, a lot of the black leathers that you see, and this one doesn't, doesn't look obnoxious, but a lot of black leathers are just look like plastic or look like paint, yeah, especially nice. you and me, Matt, going to DSW or whatever. A lot of the times they keep the price point down in these leathers by uh, a tannery purchasing low tier hides that yeah. may have a, a lot of bug bites a lot of scars a lot of healed scratches things like that they're able to cover up a lot of that by painting black over the top because right. you never know what it is <laughs> yeah so that's a good way for a tannery to take a low tier hide and, and upgrade it and nobody would really know something like the dublin from horween it's just so natural it to me it's the by far the most interesting black leather. I also really like black shirt. I love the brown Dublins too. I mean, mm -hmm. the cognac and the tan, English tan, I mean, beautiful, beautiful leather. So I, I mean, could you could you imagine you know four or five with the English? Yeah. Hint, you know, uh, that'd be that'd be killer. So if only they would let us do that, and that kind of leads to I don't have it here today. I was planning to have some Lux Arabica leather here the tanner is working on a side for me we're gonna we're gonna try to make some really inexpensive stuff to essentially give out or sell for very inexpensive uh just because i want people to get that new leather offering in their hands so they know what it's about before trying to pick up a, a pair of aldens do you guys have anything coming up in the in that particular leather if you click over to the makeups uh, the pre-orders the pre-orders pre yeah, you had it yeah all right second Second one down. Now, is this a, a this looks like it might have been a real boot, or is this like a Photoshop thing? No, it's partial it's Photoshop. Partial. So it's a real boot. It's a real boot. Yeah, the the Lux is um someone might have someone that might have added the brass and the NST to it. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, it's it's really interesting. It, it's my understanding also that Alden doesn't just add a new leather for fun. <laughs> In fact, it's no. It's a pretty rare event when they add a, a new material to their lineup, and that and that's what this is here. So there's a an article from Horween that's 
it's mind blowing because it's such a new article for Horween that I can't believe Alden decided to pick it up. But the article is called Lux and the color is Arabica. And it's a very dark brown that sort of has these like reddish coffee undertones to it. It's it's beautiful. But I think the the reason that it, it's interesting is it's new from Alden, but uh, people may be hesitant on it because they don't know what the hell it is. So again, that's why I want to try to make some inexpensive stuff to sort of just give out. To me, the defining characteristic of this leather, and I'll tell you the backstory of it too, of how that leather came about, but the defining feature is the sort of fine bits of pebbling and fine creasing that in the leather world we call the break. It's very unique and uh, different than most sort of tumble patterns that you might see in leathers. It, it creases in a very fine way that you can kind of see in the on the quarter here. And yeah. even a little bit on the on the tongue or the gusset did you actually do you call that a gusset <laughs> i don't know uh, they're, they're, they're not uh they're not a gusseted tongue but it's a yeah. tongue yeah so just a tongue. you can kind of see it um it might actually even be easier to see not zoomed in here but you see where the light sort of creates highlights and shadows that bit yeah. of texture is is very different about the lux and the reason that that's happening is because the way that horween has finished this particular leather is by applying a stain coat and then they put a finish system on top which includes a binder and a top coat and that binder sort of like glues the top coat to the to the leather itself and then they press it smooth with like a very hot iron and a lot of force and and a a bit of time so there, there's those factors in, into plating the leather they call it so you can create a really bright shiny luster with that finish system and, and like a mirror plate and a lot of heat. And that's how they came up with this. But the real intention for the Lux leather, and in fact, in a week or so, I'm going to talk to Nick Horween about Lux because I want to get the word out about this leather. Nick Horween's the one that invented this leather. And he actually originally made it with the uh, guys from Shot in mind. They were making jackets. Yeah. I was just going to mention that because there was a blogger that did a, you know, like a before and after, like a three year. You know, when he when he got it new and he showed it after it was worn for like three years or something, it was beautiful. Um, Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the screen still or not. I think yeah, I think I think that one there, the three sixteen collab. If you go back to the main, that top link there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's yeah. I can't no, that's, zoom in on that's, that's that's the shop. Anyways, there was a blogger that that, that this, put up a, a really this cool. This is post. it. I think this yeah. is it. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a very unique like uh, sh we call it sugary. And these yeah. photos. That's the other thing about a lot of these leathers. <laughs> it's the photos never do it justice. That's why I want to make things and get in people's hands. It has this uh, very unique sort of odd brightness to it uh, where it sort of reflects lights in certain spots and not others in that sort of pebbled texture this is definitely not doing it justice so i yeah. i need to make it a video of this stuff when i get it in and it, we'll just send out a bunch of leather to people i'm looking forward to it you know yeah. I mean, it's always nice to get a new leather in when you have there, there's a couple there's a couple alden you know makeups that that have hit the market you know in the last couple of weeks that look really nice you know, ours is going to take a little longer because it's the Norwegian stitch. That's the most time challenging thing that Alden does. So ours will be a little bit further down the road, but I would think hopefully by September, October, you know, we'll be seeing those. And I have a, a very uh, strong agenda for this. So my thought process is the better that this does, being that it's a new article for Alden to use, I feel like the better this does, the more opportunity there will be for Alden to pick up and try some other new leathers, perhaps like the Dublin would be really nice. <laughs> so that's yeah. why I'm trying to push it so hard. I'm the other interesting you, thing that I think you're going to see about this leather is it's it's a T-core as at the moment. It's sort of that, that T-core vibe where there's a stain layer on top of a lighter color. Some people may have seen this uh, term used before, but what happens is once this leather gets scuffed up, you're going to see a contrast right. come from underneath. Some people might not like that, but that's also something I think, you know, 
brands like yourself or even Alden should tell people about because uh, I like that look, but I think it's a little bit more of a casual thing. Um, but I know there's also some talk for them doing some fully struck through and mill dyed lux. But I think you get a, a more interesting color depth by sort of layering on the finishes and, and slowly oh, darkening it. Um, the patina would be phenomenal. I mean, you would think. I mean, I like the I like the lighter scuffy things. You, you I see it a lot on black chromaxol boots. Yeah, that have a natural back to it. And I really, really like that. In fact, uh, I'm doing, I'm participating in the, are you guys doing the stitch down patina Thunderdome? No, <laughs> I'm in it. Yeah, we, we've been following along and we know it's coming up. I picked up a pair of, uh, of boots from Oak Street Bootmaker that I intended to wear for, for the stitch down patina Thunderdome. And my original thought was to do black Chrome Excel just because I think they, when you beat those things up, uh, they just look insane. But he really sold me the idea on the uh, the natural Chrome Excel. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I'm going to see how those wear in. And I, it's hard for me to complain because I love natural Chrome Excel. Me too. <laughs> so, no. Well, so is there anything else that we should be looking at on the website here? Uh, oof. I mean, I mean, obviously, could... there's the, look how the, long, the... look how many different boots and shoes there are. Yeah. Our pre orders, the page we run, our pre orders is, is, is big. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of, I don't know, you know, through this whole last year and stuff, Jim and I kept the hammer down and kept submitting orders, you know, we didn't slow down. So I think that's kind of helped us all, all through it and, and into the future too, as well, because pre-orders that we are taking haven't slowed down, but have increased. So, you know, given a lot of options, a lot of new stuff and, and every day we're just thinking about something new and, and what we can do. And, you know, and, that, and that's kind of the fun part about it. And again, interacting with everybody, you know, so. Yeah, that's that's a killer boot. These might Mago be my, Vero. my black yeah. boots. Yeah, yeah. things you could always do that and then convert instead of brass, you convert to, to black. <laughs> Easy conversion. But Is yeah, that, that right? Boot, yeah. You go to a cobbler or something and pop on yeah, different we hardware. Have, we have a guy that does it for us, um, Tobias at Wyatt and Dad. Uh, he's phenomenal, man. His work is incredible. You never know. Who's okay, required. that's really helpful because that helps that sort of broadens out the options. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's why I say, you know, a lot of people convert their brass, their color eight to brass. So, but Gosh. yeah, I mean, we've, we've got an endless supply coming in. Who takes all your photos, guys? Um, both of us. Yeah, both of us. Mostly Matt. These are great. Look how good this photo is. That's a Photoshop. <laughs> <Yeah. Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one too. Yeah. yeah. So that's, Hampton. yeah, that's the Rockefeller, the Hampton last. It's a, a little more of a stylish last night. That's going to be a killer boot. Dress boot. Yeah. Yeah, that looks great. Oh my God. I'm getting I every time we do one of these videos, I just get sucked into uh endless scrolling and just like admiring. That bottom is... one, the last boot is the 379X. That's our Apex boot. That that has become I have that boot that I converted to brass and it's become my favorite boot. Really? This is your favorite. You can see how that if you go back to that soul picture. You can really see through that waist where it sleeks out. Mm -hmm. It's tight. Yeah. It's this so is the cool. one you were describing is similar to the shape of the modified last. Somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the, the the one closest to modified. I've never heard of this one before. How does it fit, fit for somebody that's familiar with True Balance and Barry? How does this guy? So generally, you take your Barry and True Balance size. Yeah. Generally. Mm. It's a limited last. It's a. It, it, in terms of sizing, it only goes up to size 12. So, you know, if you have a bigger foot or a narrow width that doesn't have narrows, I think it's just strictly D width and maybe E width. Have uh, you seen this one in, in person? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we got a run in already, sold it out, and we have a second run coming. Matt Matt is coming right behind me now with his pair. Oh, great. I, Let's, I, I let, me, uh, let me get a better view of, the, of your screen then. <laughs> Oh, that yeah. looks that looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the toes, I mean, it's 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 a more rounded toe. Obviously, right. I had uh, Tobias Taps. put pass one for me, but yeah. So I mean, it's uh, and you can see the, of course, the brass added. God, those are great, and I like the brass and color eight a lot. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but yeah, just I love this boot, and you can see. I mean, like I said, the tight. 
So I walk horribly. So I always put these little plastic tabs on back because I can burn a heel out because I do a lot of walking downtown to UPS and stuff like that. So yeah, I always had these ugly old taps on the bottom, but they certainly save it. But this waste is just, I mean, it's tight. And, and then with the nice water. Do you, off. how does it feel on your foot that particular last with that tighter waist? It just, I just the way it, the heel is is just so nice. Just the way it hugs your heel a little bit better, but you still got wiggly room in the toes. A lot like, a lot like True Balance, right? yeah, kind of like True Balance, but a little tighter in the heel. Yeah. I'm interested. Oh no, it's not black, but I might have to pick up that guy. I really like the look of that. Well, we might need to do that one in black. Yeah, we might. We were talking about talking about black. that for a while. So. Well, I know a guy that's in the market, so. <laughs> no, no, it's a killer boot. Well, thank you guys so much for spending the time with me tonight. Um, thank you, man. And I yeah, we could go on for days. You know, and that's it. And that's just, absolutely. So we love people coming to the store. Absolutely love it. I mean, we have you know we always we always have bourbon and scotch and wine and everything else. You know, and it's and it's great to see people and it's great people see them come back to the store and stuff because that we miss it, man. I mean, I love Jim, but I'm you know talking to him just him for you know it's it's been there's no doubt it's been slow, but business is starting to pick up and it's great. To, I mean, it's so great to see people. And, and our Facebook friends or whatever that come in, you know, you know, to hang out and stuff. And, and that's a big part of that's it. What it's all about. You know, I mean, it, it's a business and you want to sell shoes, obviously, and stuff. But it's so great to, to just people just to come in and hang out and just talk. And I mean, we love talking about it. I mean, I'm, I'm into watches, cars, you know, boots and shoes and everything else. And, and most people we find it that are the boots or have a similar interest and stuff. So there's there's a lot to talk about. And that's kind of like this, you know, it's just it's. I hate talking on camera and everything, and Jim will tell you and stuff that does commercials and stuff. But this is just like it's it's more comfortable. It's just talking to somebody, just a buddy, you know, and stuff like that. And that's a, and that's a big part of our store and, and customer service is a big big focus for us. And it's what's helped propel us, you know, way up the ladder. You're absolutely right. There's with the pandemic, we're realizing like there's no substitute for in person. Uh, so as much as as much of a convenience as this and opportunity for us to be able to chat. Uh, I got to take my brother down to come visit you guys and drink some of your scotch. <laughs> yeah. Open invitation. Yeah. I wanted to say one thing just about your wallets. So, I mean, I'm, I'm particular. And the thing about yours and it's saying it's the stitch, man. I mean, the stitch, how you just have the tight stitch. I don't know. I mean, I don't know a lot about wallets and manufacturing wallets and stuff, but the quality and this thing's been beat to death and just how this holds up. And this is, you know, I mean, I'm not doing advertisement for you. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. And I love this thing, man. It's, you know, it's, it's been on my ass for, you know, two and a half years now and stuff. And it's, your stuff is phenomenal. And I mean, just a, a big shout out to you. And I absolutely love it. <laughs> it just, well, thank you so much. I mean, and people, people were, we're putting together a special makeup for you guys. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah. Yeah. We're excited, I mean, so we're excited for that. People will be able to pick up some limited edition stuff with you guys. that I'm really excited about I think people are going to love. But um, yeah, thank you about the the wallet thing. It, it's interesting. It, we're celebrating our ten year anniversary of Ashland this Amazing. month, which is uh, wild, right? I mean, it's, you guys have done the two years. You know, ten years is going to come up on you uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I know you guys will be successful even beyond that. But it's, you know, I still have wallets from when we started that are holding up great. And it's yep. there's that's why we did what we did is we had this deeper understanding of the leather and how it how how it loses strength basically we would see where other products would fail and we just don't do that uh so that's why you see your wallet developing the way it does the other thing is you're mentioning stitches per inch that's something that i don't really think about a lot and i've been meaning to ask people do, do stitches per inch is like how tight uh well obviously it's stitches per inch so you can do more per inch and it i my perception is some people think that's better do you guys have any inside uh, on the in the footwear world, do people think that more stitches per inch are better? Yes, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. <clears throat> yeah, because yeah, for us, tight, uh, we, we... stitch is preferred. Yeah, so I don't know if that's preferred. considered. If I don't know if yours is considered a lot of stitch per inch or I not, but, but that's yeah. I mean, that's perfect. I mean, some of you see that they just look like they were hand stitched, but not well. <laughs> you know, it's just a, just whatever, and just how how straight it is and just to me how tight it is and uh, i don't know we we um the stitching per inch sometimes is dic dictated by the pattern because you want the whole of the needle to land in a certain spot on the wallet 
Um, or if we're trying to do something that's a little bit more structural, like on our money clips, like where the, the clip is held in place, we actually double up the stitching there and make it a little separated apart. So we don't have any perforation. Sometimes perforation is a concern for us with stitching distance. Um, but also like with hand stitching, you can do a hand stitch that you and I would never be able to tell the difference between that and a machine. For me, that kind of defeats the purpose, but hand stitching is like you see on the Alden hand stitch mock toes. It's like the, to me, the only reason to do it is because it has an aesthetic. It, it's got a vibe. It's chunkier. Right, it's right, it's right. like a little bit more casual. We get so many requests for hand stitched wallets. And I think that's because there are people marketing themselves as like, Hey, this is hand stitch. It's better. We don't tend to see the machine stitch stuff break and we charge more for hand stitching, both of which we guarantee forever. So it's like, I tell people just like, save your money and don't get the hand stitch thing unless you absolutely love this like chunky thread look. Yep. Yeah, take it for what it's worth, but that's, I don't know. that's I just, where we I, land on stitch. It's just clean. Let's put it this way. It's clean. <laughs> you know, I find just, ours has like a good vibe between yeah. it's kind of the crossover thing that Alden has where it's like, it's got a little bit of casualness where you can wear it with jeans, but you can kind of dress it up too. Thank you.